Hey guys, hope you're all doing well, as always. This story that I have for you today comes from Tennessee and is from November of 2015. So, you know, as always, pull up a stump and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. And from here on out, I'll be speaking from the point of view of the person telling the story. So I was 20 years old and I was still living with my parents because I was poor, which means that I also have to travel with them. So we figure it's time to visit some a pretty rural family in a very southern part of the world called Tennessee. And this area is backwoods AF, you know. It's it's pretty wild. Like they're not inbred, but these people are like very traditional. You know, they do they do a lot of weird things that are stuff that we would consider weird. But a family get together means that we all have to hang out. Now, they are decent people once you get to know them. Uh, somehow, I group up with three cousins and a friend from out of town. I'll call them Eddie, Garrett, Austin, and Trent. And these are the names of some people I'm related to, but not in the right configuration. I'm not really great at making up names. So we sneak off with a six pack that my grandpa left out. He's a very good man, but he's terribly unobservant. I find a clearing a few minutes out, or maybe an hour, I don't really know at this point. Adrenaline kills my sense of time. So Garrett, the local cousin in these here parts, seems really nervous. He's older than me, but keeps whimpering every time we push forward. He carries an old rifle, like from the old days when they hunted for a living. Eddie and Austin are keeping him cool, telling him that we'll only be out here for a bit, so, you know, just lighten up. So we light up a small lamp, and we're sitting there, starting to get a little bit tipsy. Not really drunk, just having like a few beers. I have like half a can and call it good. I still don't really have a taste for alcohol, I guess. Garrett suddenly says, We shouldn't be here. And I'm thinking, well, we just stole beer from our hit grandpa. Of course we probably shouldn't be out here. And he says, No man, we really shouldn't be out here. We should leave. We debate arguing because I'm digging the atmosphere, but then suddenly it gets really cold. We put on our jackets we dragged along, but wow, is it cold. We really shouldn't be here, guys. We have to leave. Austin laughs and then Trent grunts. The lamp flickers as a bug bumps it. A big ass bug and a cold wind. This is a weird place. Garrett, now super pissed, picks up Austin and basically stands him up like a good little soldier. We are leaving. Except he's not telling us. He's not even looking at us. He's yelling behind Trent. Trent and I are trying to figure out just what in the hell is going on and what we're doing since we, we seem to be about to reenact the Hatfields and the McCoys in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, Garrett picks up his gun and aims at Trent. Austin drops like a rock. Trent is scared. I'm, I'm wondering just what I'm going to have to say to the cops about all this. We're leaving, ain't we, fellas? Trent slowly turns around out of curiosity. I swear I have never seen someone look as terrified as the look that was on Trent's face. Austin sees Trent, looks to me. I stare back. I'm too much of a chicken to see what's going on behind Trent. Trent suddenly sprints past Garrett, who keeps aiming his gun at just whatever is back there. You, Austin, don't move until I tell you. But when I say it, run like a fox in a hen house. At this point, I'm much too scared to try and call that out, so I just dumbly nod my head. I turn my head to try and sneak a peek. Don't. Move. Garrett quietly moves, picks up the lantern by hooking it with the muzzle. We are leaving now. We don't want any trouble. We didn't meet anything by it. Something moves in the bushes. The cold gets colder, literally a second from peeing my pants. Garrett stops breathing for a moment, and the lantern swings gently. Run. I'm not a fast man, but tonight, I was Usain Bolt. Austin is like five feet from me. I can hear him crying. I'm crying too. I hear three gunshots, one every few seconds, and then a scream. And I realize that as I'm telling this story, I'm actually tearing up again. This isn't a joke, but it feels better to write it down instead of bottle it up. But anyways, have you ever heard a coyote yelp? 
They sound like they're sort of young kids crying and yelling. I grew up with coyotes in my backyard. This was definitely not a coyote. It was high pitched, higher than a coyote, and it was right behind us. Austin and I don't even look to each other, we just keep running. Finally clearing the trees and entering the meadows near a creek. Garrett appears behind us, rifle slung over his shoulder and he's shouting to keep running. The scream gets louder, but not in volume. It's getting closer. Garrett tells us to keep going, that we're almost across the line. He full stops and takes another shot before moving again, and I'm thinking, oh my god, this is how I die. Suddenly, more screams. They're everywhere. We see an old fence, not more than 30 yards away. Austin leaps that shit like a gymnast. I'm, a, I'm like a few seconds behind him, but I land on my back and I see stars. Garrett leaps over and takes aim again, completely out of breath. We're on our side. F off. The screaming literally stops. There's no crickets or anything to fill the void left by it. Just three adult men crying like babies. Austin is on his knees, fairly certain he just vomited. I'm not even here anymore. Garrett, where's the lantern? Garrett keeps his gun up, but his knees are shaking. Garrett whispers, back in the trees. We all look up and see the tree line. Sure enough, the lantern is sitting in the trees at the edge of the meadows. There's something standing near the trees, but it's, it's way too tall. It doesn't really move, it just jitters back and forth like someone cut out the in-between frames of an animation. It moves back and forth across the trees. The light blocks out the details, which was perfectly fine by me. It turns and sort of hovers across the ground. Its knees are backwards. Holy shit. Garrett is heaving now. His breath is ragged, but he seems to be okay. Garrett, Garrett, what the hell's going on? And he just says, shut up. I'll admit it. I'm full on sobbing now but I'm so cried out that I can't actually make tears, just blubber in the corner. We're on our side, you know the rules. Another one appears from the woods and starts to jitter. Garrett aims up and shoots again. I feel my ears ring for a second. The figures freak out and rush back and forth across tree lines, falling in and out of the light. For a second, I think I see three shapes moving around, but I don't really care, I just want this to stop. The light in the trees flickers and Garrett curses. When the light goes out, run as fast as you can and scream and holler for Grandpa. Don't stop, even if I tell you to. Austin doesn't even argue. I'm nodding and turning to stare at the trees. The light flickers again, but it comes back. The shapes stop moving. Oh wow, they got closer bigger something I don't know the light flickers I expect them to get bigger again but the light doesn't come back on and we book it Austin takes the lead rushes into the forest behind us screaming for grandpa Garrett doesn't even hold the rifle for a shot anymore he's just sprinting like we are we hear the screams again but they're getting closer oh my god they're closer suddenly lights lights everywhere the screams stop Grandpa is like 50 yards away with my dad, and three distant uncles and some other guy in a sweatshirt. They all have guns, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? Garrett and Austin slide into the ground in front of Grandpa. I don't really care at this point, and I just kind of crash into my dad, who sort of hugs me for a second as I keep crying. Garrett is saying a bunch of things, but he's saying it so fast I can't understand him with his accent anymore. Grandpa and one of the uncles just nod. Where's your friend? Trent ran past us. Didn't he reach you? Grandpa grabs me and Garrett. Austin is curled up weeping on the ground. Take him to the house. Hide him in the guest room with no windows. They've seen what he looks like. At this point I just want to go home, or to wherever counts as home, just away from this. Grandpa says I need to go with them. He says Garrett has a good gun. We walk through the woods again. And I have to admit, I do feel a lot safer with all the guns. The guy in the sweatshirt whispers something to Grandpa. My dad keeps marching, hand on my shoulder. Garrett starts calling out for Trent, tells me to start calling out too. We keep calling out. The guy in the sweatshirt says something to Grandpa again. 
we reached the fence, the exact same spot, vomit still on the ground where Austin was. Grandpa waves a flashlight around, illuminates the meadows. My uncles are doing the same. Suddenly, a shape darts out of the tree line, crying and huffing. It's Trent. He stops a few feet from the fence and falls on his knees. He's crying like me. Grandpa and uncles are totally quiet. Garrett and I don't move. I thought I lost you guys back there at the campsite. I'm scared because nobody is saying anything. Garrett talks first. Where did you go, Trent? I got lost ahead of you. I got turned around, I guess. Grandpa leans in and whispers something to the other guy's ear. He nods. My dad tightens the grip on my shoulder. Trent looks confused. Aren't you guys going to help? Grandpa moves in with his gun a bit. Help with what? Help me get over the fence. The fence is tall and I'm tired. Grandpa and my uncle slowly lift their guns. What do you mean? You look fine. Haha, <laughs> funny guys. Seriously, let me in. Grandpa is deathly serious now. I have never felt so scared of a person before in my life. Trent looks nervous, almost antsy now. Keeps looking back to the tree line. I felt like something was off, obviously, but I'm too scared and stupid to figure out what it is. Help me over the fence. The guy in the sweatshirt talks up. Come over here, kid. Trent stops and stares at this guy, glares at him. Not you. You can't. It's not your property. Grandpa starts to raise the gun now. My dad tightens his grip. He's a friend of the family. He's not the owner. It's rude. Trent was invited to the reunion. Trent is still on his knees, but it feels like he's just waiting to pounce. You know that feeling of superiority you get when you stand over someone on their knees? I wasn't feeling that. Not one bit. At this moment, I realized what seems so weird about Trent. He's not breathing. Trent is now staring daggers at Grandpa. The uncles are training their guns on him. The other guy is just holding the flashlight on Trent's face. My dad whispers something into my ear along the lines of, Trent will be fine. Grandpa shoots the gun off into the air just like Garrett did, and then waits for the shot to stop ringing out. You aren't invited. This is our side. You know the rules. Grandpa and my uncle slowly start to back away. Garrett and my dad are guiding me back. The guy from the sweatshirt just keeps the flashlight on Trent and moves in time with my grandpa. One of my uncle's legs behind nods to my grandpa and keeps pointing at Trent while we back away. The other guy in the sweatshirt is slowly moving along with us. I shouldn't look. I shouldn't look. But I turn around and look anyways. The light is still trained on Trent. But Trent is like moving to the tree line. But he's moving to the trees like he's a puppet being dragged back. I wanted to scream. But I'm caught in my throat and my father grabs my head and turns it forward. Trent will be fine. The screams start back up, but they're distant now. Garrett looks over his shoulder, but Grandpa keeps marching. We make it to the house, but the party is dying down now. I head inside. I'm basically numb. I hear Austin crying from one of the rooms. Dad takes me inside, leads me down and tucks me in for the first time since I was ten. The twenty-year-old in me is very indignant. The terrified kid in me doesn't care. I spend the rest of the night staring at the wall before falling asleep to the sound of gunshots and far-off screaming. I wake up the next day. Grandpa is sitting at the table with most of the extended family, smoking and reading. Garrett's playing with some of the younger cousins. Austin's watching television. My dad hands me some eggs and a piece of toast. He smiles at me like nothing happened. Garrett sees me, smiles, and motions me over. Trent went home this morning. He's okay. And I'm thinking, nobody is okay. Who said that we were okay? What happened? Garrett gives me a look and quietly states as matter-of-factly as possible. Last night didn't happen. Trent is okay. Drop it. I did, however, find out later that Trent did indeed make it home he was found by some neighbors down the road. He apparently woke up in the brush and just ran home. He was convinced that he got drunk or something and was hung over, which explained all the bruises he had on his back and neck. 
I only asked my grandpa what happened once. He just said that he's had trouble with the people on the nearby land, that they keep trying to get onto his property, and I asked why they hadn't taken it. He looks at me, looks right at me, and says, I haven't invited them in, that's why. He wouldn't answer anything else after that. He just said, not a problem, to everything. It's been three years. I've had various visits to my family that ended with something similar going on, but never has ever come close to the terror I felt that night. Part of me wants to look up and see just what those things were. Another part is desperately repressing that urge. I would say it's the closest thing I ever had to a skinwalker incident, but I can never figure out just what it was. So what do you think about that story? I quite enjoyed it myself, you know. Had a whole bunch of things that I liked. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to decide what you think of it. Was it real? Fake? Exaggerated? Plausible? Whatever. Anyways, I hope you, en again, enjoyed it. I'm talking in circles now. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, and you can like and subscribe if you want to, if you enjoyed it. And if you feel like it, you can become a patron for $3 a month. You know, just kind of helps out for some of those uh, videos that I put up that YouTube puts the old yellow mark on it, which means it's, uh, like, limited. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night or day or wherever you are.